Hello, everybody, and welcome to Joe's Barbecue House. I'm Joe, and today we're going to hang St. Louis style cut ribs on the Weber Smoky Mountain. <laughs> So today's ingredients will include this Stubbs spicy barbecue sauce and this Head Country original barbecue sauce. And for the rubs, I'm going to use my homemade Joe's Barbecue House hot rub that I've been working on for quite some time. You can see the recipe in the description below. Just hit the show more. And here's my SPG. I'm still working on it. I added more pepper to the original recipe, considering I always add extra pepper. So, still working on it, and when it's finished, I will post it in the description area. All right, let's go ahead and get these seasoned up. Going to start out with the SPG, and then we're going to follow back with the hot rub. But here, as you can see, I left the silver skin on, only because this is my first time hanging ribs ever over an open fire so i figured i'd play it safe and leave them on because i don't want them falling off the hooks i'd also like to mention that i'm going to keep one of those racks without the hot rub because one of my kids asked if i can make one mild and i said hey no problem at all here i'm going to use this sweet heat all-purpose rub on that single slab of ribs there he can handle the heat from the sweet heat rub uh just not my hot rub because it's <laughs> it's pretty uh it's pretty hot <laughs> if you like hot stuff you're gonna love that hot rub as i mentioned before the recipe is in the description area and if you decide to try it let me know your thoughts on it all right so here all i'm gonna do is take these hooks and get them inserted about the third bone back so i can assure that these won't fall off all right let's go ahead and get this weber smoky mountain lit up what i have in there is is the cajun banded fire ring it's about three quarters full and i also added about three chunks of apple wood now what i'm going to do is light these lighter cubes and i'm going to keep the lid off and let those lighter cubes burn out because i don't want that smell of the lighter cubes getting all up into the cooking chamber so when that's finished i shall return well for those that are new to the channel this is my meat hanger mod that i did for the wsm the only part you'll need is a cajun banded rotisserie ring, three half inch rods, and three half inch collars. I would have went with rebar rod, but I like the idea of having the collars so the rods don't slip through. Our lighter cubes are about burnt out, so I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on it. All I'm going to do from here is leave all the three vents at the bottom wide open and the top vent closed. As you can see, it's exhausting just fine from that rotisserie ring. Also keep in mind that I'm not using the water pan as this is going to act very similar to like a pit barrel cooker. The one thing that's nice about using the Weber Smoky Mountain 22 with the Cajun banded rotisserie ring is the fact that when you have longer cuts of meat that you're trying to hang, you don't have to worry about it being too close to the fire. And plus, you could cook a ton of meat on this thing. All right, so I'm shooting for pit temps of 275 degrees throughout the entire cook. So let's go ahead and get these ribs hung. Here I'm gonna go ahead and line up all three racks of these ribs on the center rod. Well, I have to say, this is absolutely one of my favorite mods that I've ever done. So I'm not exactly sure what happened here as I see a lot of people going to the third bone back. Well, they're kind of drooping, I don't like that. I'm gonna go ahead and reposition these and take them up to the second bone. Now Scott over at the Real Show Barbecue had a great idea intertwining two hooks together, which I will try next time. Here you'll see we have pit temps of 275 degrees. And as we move up to the top of the lid, we are closer to, well, just a hair over 300 degrees, which I'm not worried about the temperatures on the top of the lid because naturally it's going to be hotter at the very top. So I am going to stick with the temperatures on the side of the WSM. And there, as you can see, I have my vents three quarters of the way open. Okay, we are now two and a half hours in. What I want to do here is 
check them out and see what they look like and determine whether I want to pull them or not. Well, they actually look really good and they feel pretty tender, but I think I'm going to let them go for another half hour. All right, we are now three hours in. I'm going to go ahead and put my hot gloves on. I really need to get that tool to lift those hooks up out of there, but for right now, this will have to do. And I'm going to tell you right now that these things are about to fall apart, and I think I'm glad I left that membrane on there, which I don't think it's going to affect the bite through, but it's all good because I'm experimenting. The next time I do this, I'll have the membrane off. Comment below how you do your ribs on your pit barrel cookers or meat hanging mods, whatever you may have. Do you leave your membrane on or do you leave it off? Let me know. Here what I'm going to do is just probe for tenderness and check the internal temps. Not that I ever do that, but while I have it out here, I, I will. And yeah, 185 to 190. Oh boy. I don't know. I think these things are going to be too tender for my likings. I know some of you out there like them fall off the bone and all that, but I'm not that type of guy. All right, so here I'm going to go ahead and add the barbecue sauces. My family had requested me to put barbecue sauce on them, and I said no problem. So the two outside ones will have the stubs spicy, and the center one will have the, the Head Country original. And there's times I sauce, and there's times I don't. I like them both ways. But I am not going to put these back on the pit only because they're just, they're done. They're just, they're, they're tender enough and I don't want to ruin them by overcooking them. I could tell you one thing though. Normally it takes me four hours to do these ribs and they only took three hours. That's pretty impressive. The only reason why I could figure on how they cook so fast is because all the moisture inside the barrel from the drippings hitting the hot coals and firing it back up into the pit. Well, on another note, what we're going to do here is just tint this with aluminum foil and let it rest for about 15 minutes, and I shall return. All right, our 15 minutes is up, and all I want to do is go ahead and get these babies cut up. And I'm here to tell you, these babies are tender. As a matter of fact, I could have pulled these off at the two and a half hour mark and would have been very happy with them. Now, this is fine if you, like, fall off the bone tender. Eh, you know, some people like that. I mean, look at them bones just coming out of there. I'm not sure if it's my lighting or what, but my camera is really showing that center one pretty dark, almost like it looks burnt, but it's not. I'm not sure why it's doing that. All right, well, I'm going in to take me a bite of one of these spicy ones. And they turned out really good so far. I mean, they're nice, juicy. I believe they had some decent color. And I'm going to tell you, they are fall off the bone. Oh, man. Too much for me. I'm not a big fan of them like this, but they have some great flavor. I'll tell you that. You know, they, some of you guys might like them like this. To me, they're overdone. So, therefore, the next time I do this, I'm going to probe them at around the two and a half hour mark because I think that would have been perfect. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and get a taste of the mild ribs. Now, these are the ones I use with the sweet heat rubs, and yeah, they have some excellent flavor. I like them a little on the spicy side, but hey, they all turned out great, and the family enjoyed them. Well, this is all I have for you today, and if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you can get updated when I release new videos. Comment down below your thoughts on this cook or how you would have done it differently. Smash that like button if you learned something today or if you liked the video. Thanks and have a great day.